Dude, so many boogers. Eleven or ten, somewhere around there. I used to have uh, like one of those digital workstations. Okay. You know what those are? Like it's called like a Boss BR eight hundred. Like that was the last one I got. Actually, I had a couple, but um, you know it would be like a four to eight track thing, and you'd record onto one track. And if if you had eight tracks, you had to like pick two and bounce them down to one, and like kind of work around that and burn straight to CD. Stuff like that, you know, and so I did that, and I think when I was 15 or 16, I got a computer, and then I got Cubase. Cubase, okay. Yeah. I got kicked out of my house, and um, I was uh, pretty much just like, I had all my recording stuff in my little Kia Spectra and my dog. And I was living in my Kia Spectra, and I was still recording bands because that's how I would make money mm -hmm. when I wasn't touring. And then um, I would drive it to other people's houses and like set my stuff up in their basement, you know, or in the garage. And um, so I finally, you know, fast forward to now, and that didn't last that long, you know. But so I've always been had like a temporary spot to record, and then. Um, Fast forward to now, I, I got a house, and I was always recording in the bedroom, and I thought I was done. I was like, oh, this is my spot, you know? But then I'd always hear my dogs walking mm -hmm. on the floor, barking, and then I could hear the street, because I'm like right next to a main road, and then there's a fucking church right behind me, and it would boom, boom, the, the bells. church bells three times a day, <laughs> three times a day for seven minutes each time. Really? So I'd wow. be like sitting there recording. I'd be like going to sing and it'd be like boom boom and I'd just be like mm -hmm. a lot of local shows. Um playing in bands before Citizen and stuff and um we did our first tour ever, US tour, it was eight I think it was eight or eight and a half weeks long, which is long. Um, with a band called Turnover. Mm hmm they were, you know, we kind of came up together for sure. And um, it was right out of high school. I graduated, and I think it was like a month and a half after we just hit the road. And um, the internet was on our side um, at the time, and it was an awesome tour. I mean, a good show was like 60, 70 people, but mm -hmm. um, on our first full U.S., that's pretty awesome yeah you know, we did like week runs here and there playing to nobody um we played uh <laughs> we played a uh, a venue in new jersey once called the meat locker okay <laughs> and uh it was in a basement there's another show going on next to us um we sound checked there's nobody there nobody the room is actually empty um, we sound checked, um, and then the sound guy leaves. Oh my. Leaves the room, and so we're literally the only people in these room, in this room. Um, that was pretty funny. Um, so we, we did like, maybe like four or five, I'm just kind of throwing numbers out. Um, like really bad tours like that. And then, um, we caught some traction on the internet, and then when we were Plan that happened while we were planning our full U.S. Mm -hmm. with Turnover, which they were also, um, you know, coming up a little bit. And so we did that, and I think, I mean, we played, we played Pomona, and there was like a hundred some people there. It was like, it was actually crazy. It was a, cr it was a crazy time. And then, um, that band, Story So Far, took us out, and then that skyrocketed us then we went on tour with a band called the wonder years and now it's like honestly it's, it's it's crazy to think about because everything seemed so um lively and everybody it seemed like uh not to say that everybody's not friends but it just seemed like so much was happening you know mm -hmm. and now it's like oh here's a tour all right let's do it and then you know you know the shows are gonna be good, which is a good feeling. 
But, you know, there's something different. You know, there's something special about when everything is first happening mm -hmm. that you kind of miss, you know, and... So were those uh, early tours, were those like kind of DIY, like the band booked them mostly? Or were, um, did like one of the bands have an agent or a booking, a booking agency that kind of set up a bunch of the shows? Or... We actually, um, we knew this guy, Jason Parent, from Cleveland. Okay. Um, he owned his own company, which, you know, mm -hmm. it would be like if I started a booking company right yeah, now. Yeah. I know absolutely nothing. Yeah, you know, just going for it. And he was like, hey, can I book you guys? Like, I just want to try this. And we said, yeah. And um, he he did the turn that first tour and with Turnover and stuff, and he killed it. And now he works at APA. He, like, lives in New York. And oh, yeah. he's making a lot. He, like, really climbed the ranks fast and... We're lucky to have grown with him. You know, mm -hmm. he books turnover too, and cool, cool. puts that band Real Friends. He he does a, he does a lot of bands, and uh, yeah, we we got super lucky with him. That's awesome. It's like so organic. I know, and how we met him was bad <laughs> because he booked our show in Cleveland with uh, a this band Hostage Calm was on tour. Okay. Um, so, and he booked us for the show, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll give you gas money." And then we we play and stuff, and he's like, I'm not giving you any money. You know? Like, <laughs> Damn. And we were like, oh, all right. And I guess, like, I don't remember this, but our drummer, like, walked up. Our drummer at the time, he's not in the band anymore, like, walked up to him and was like, hey, like, we'd really appreciate it if you gave us money. He was, like, so polite. Like, the dude could never be mean to anybody. Like, we'd really appreciate it if, like, we at least get gas money. And then I guess Pan just ignored him, like, straight oh, to his wow. face. And we were all like... You know, we're like 15, 16 years old. We're all like, See you. you know, mm -hmm. drive back to Toledo. And then Peanut like DMs one of us, like maybe Nick or somebody on Twitter, like, oh, you're fucking. You're, <laughs> oh, we call him Peanut, by the way. You're, you're, your drummer's gonna try to fucking strong arm me and all that shit. And we're like, <laughs> strong. We're like, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, like, it's all good. You know, so we, we still hang that story over his head. I don't even know, like, why we chose to have him book us after that, mm -hmm. you know. But it all it all seemed to work yeah, out. You did, and, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I I've never I've I've never been like the big networking guy in Citizen. It's always I feel like it's mainly Nick. Mm -hmm. um, our guitarist is always always the one talking <laughs> and making connections. I I think that you know without him. Um, like I said, you gotta make friends, you know, without him talking to people and making friends, um, you know, we wouldn't be in this position either. We were on tour with Turnover, I keep saying that, we're always on tour with them, it seems like, in uh, Europe, we were doing Europe with them, and um, I got fucked again, you know, it doesn't happen often, mm -hmm. it's only happened twice out of our whole thing, career, but I mean, shit happens, and... Um, I got, it, it was like crazy, dude, I like, <laughs> like if I, if, no exaggeration, that's how it would sound if I wanted to talk, and, and everybody says, it's like, well, we don't want to, we're in, we're in Europe, I don't want to cancel these shows, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, <laughs> you know, and so we ended up having Austin, um, like came and like sang a bunch of Citizen songs, They'd play the set and they'd be like, alright, who wants who wants to come sing next? And people would come <laughs> up and grab the mic. And it worked super well for one show. It happened for two shows. And then so it was like it was like a party the first show. Like such a great time. Everybody was super understanding. I'm like standing side stage watching the set. And when Nick was like, he's fucking sick, he has no voice, everybody was like, ooh, you know, thanks for still playing. And then we played I think maybe it was Berlin. So we would go into it thinking like, oh, it's gonna be great. Fuck it. You know, yesterday was awesome. Dude. <laughs> Whoa. Berlin some awesome shit. Everybody was just like straight face. Stoic. No no like oh he has no voice, I understand. Just like 
visibly pissed. <laughs> we get like DMs after the show, like fucking waste my fucking money and all that <laughs> shit. We're all like, oh. <laughs>